Good evening and welcome to a new edition of uh, To The Point. Uh, I'd like to send my uh, sincere uh, best wishes uh, for the holy month of Ramadan to Muslims uh, worldwide. May this uh, month be, bring with it a lot of blessed tidings. Uh, this evening with the distinguished gentleman we'll be discussing Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi in office two years. What has been achieved and more importantly, what needs to be done? With us this evening is Dr. Hassan al-Shafai, who is a board member of the Egyptian Businessmen Association. And worth noting, he is the chairman of the Egyptian Romanian Business Council. A pleasure to have you with us. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Two years. They flew. <laughs> with a lot of ups I, and downs. I think two years, uh, very critical two years for Egypt. Uh, we've been through a lot. Before I really talk about the achievements of uh, uh, President Sisi and uh, his uh, staff uh, during these two years, I think we have to uh, recognize that we inherited a lot of problems when we started. There, there were a lot of uh, accumulations of problems in economy, uh, in social, in security, in everything. Mm. And uh, when you start, uh, I think it's fair to say where is the point you start from? Mm. And uh, what have you really done to, to change the, and, uh, what you've done for the, three, the two years? Uh, basically, I think he uh, concentrated on the infrastructure. Uh, when we, we go back two years ago, we find we were facing a very serious problem in energy, mm -hmm. electricity. Catastrophic problem. Uh, very serious. It, w it was going really to stop all uh, uh, any dreams about uh, uh, accelerating of economy or, or, or yeah. even you know, the normal life. Uh, so we have very serious problem with electricity. I think we all uh, recognize how it was, and in the summer and in Ramadan, uh, how is the electricity uh, power used to be cut all the time? Exactly. Uh, a shortage of petroleum, so we could not fill our uh, cars. Uh, wh whoever have factories or using uh, diesel or solar uh, fuel could not find it and uh, we could really make a big uh, uh, adventure to get the, some of the fuel. Mm. All of that being resolved mm. in these two years. Mm. Any problem seriously with electricity. This is a miracle by itself. This mm. is a hell of an achievement. Mm. We feel we resolve the problem about, well, at least the customers, the users, are not facing any serious problems. We don't see. We the don't. end user doesn't see any problem, but uh, probably uh, behind uh, the scenes maybe there and, are and even the factories doesn't see it for okay. the shortage of the fuel. So this is what it's count really uh, mm. today. Uh, if we go further, uh, we will see that uh, uh, he go again, uh, you know, uh, any human look for the uh, houses, a place to, to live, mm -hmm. uh, look for, of course, for the food and uh, for uh, the clothes. Uh, this is the three basic things mm -hmm. for any human, regard, without going really any further for any... Uh, mm -hmm. So, I think the number of units they rebuild, they build right now and uh, distribute to uh, the poor people or the middle class people, it's uh, increasing. It hasn't been like that for years. So in two years, I think we're doing very good. Well, do you think, because uh, one of the, the, the reasons for building those housing uh, facilities is not only to give to the poor, but more importantly, to start eliminating as well slums. Are uh, we on the right track? Do you think we will end the, the, the slums which have really I, I, spread all over Cairo. I, I, I think, well, I don't know if we really, in, you know, if, if, if I can see the, the, the green light in the end of the tunnels for the, the slums, uh, you know, because there are too many. Yeah, and unfortunately. What, uh, yeah, unfortunately, we left them for years, and, uh, but we're starting. This is, you know, we are in the beginning of the stairs. That, that, that's all what I can say. 
As long as we are starting, and maybe we can go and uh, say, well, we have to really uh, accelerate this uh, because uh, this is, the speed is not good enough, we need to go faster. Uh, but the, 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 the point I like, a lot of the middle class people, mm. young people, getting uh, uh, flats these days, very reasonable prices, mm. with a lot of installment, they can afford it. And uh, here I'm talking about people, uh, they working, uh, you know, in, in, in our companies, uh, they working uh, in uh, the government, uh, they working in schools, uh, they starting really getting uh, this kind of uh, units and uh, they are very happy. Okay. So that is, it's already there. And people start talking about it. This is concerning the, 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 the uh, building houses yeah. Yeah. for... Uh, uh, I, I think the number of, of, uh, of flats needed uh, to, to clear these problems, you talk about millions. Yeah. And, and, and that means uh, a lot of engineering, uh, a lot of uh, building materials, uh, uh, a lot of infrastructures for the land, uh, it will take time, mm. but at least we are on the right track. Mm. Okay, so mm. this is the, 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 the third area I see achievements in, mm. in it. Mm. Of course, the roads and the bridges, very clear to everyone. If you travel uh, south or north, uh, east or west. Lots would, of highways. Yeah, a lot of highways, a lot of good bridges. Uh, it's safe a lot of times. Uh, so this is really uh, uh, very beneficial. Uh, beside, of course, uh, it, it keep a lot of people, uh, it keeps the unemployment low. Okay. okay? Yes. And it keep, of course, the factories producing the material for these roads uh, uh, working. Mm. Uh, the project's about one and a half million uh, acre of dams, uh, reclamations uh, lands. Uh, so far, it is in the media more than we really feel it. But if what we hear is correct, and if they really going to produce, uh, 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 the, uh, what I understand, it's not just uh, a production uh, cell. They're going to, to, to establish a whole community there. So mm -hmm. that means they talking about removing uh, uh, at least half a million people from mm. the crowded cities, uh, rehabilitate them to these new uh, areas, building a new schools, uh, building uh, a new uh, government center to serve them, uh, and of course they are a, pr a production cells uh, there. If, if this is work, uh, I think uh, it's not just is the result of the, uh, the agricultural production, it's going to be more beneficial than that. So yeah. this is a, a, a good project, but I can see it's still a long way until mm. we really feel Will secure it about it. take Egypt back, because Egypt was really a self-sufficient uh, country when it comes to uh, basic food commodities and agro products. Do you think we can go back to being that way again? Uh, Instead of, um, we're, we're now we're reclaiming lands which unfortunately have been destroyed and built. It is a very nice question, but to be fair, I am not even capable to answer this because all experts telling us that is the problem is not the land, the problem is the water. Mm. So as long as we have limited water and mm. we have not resolved that very sharply, mm. you know, we can go for desalination of, uh, of the water from the sea, we can go for underground water, whatever it is, but the basic problem of agriculture in Egypt is water. Water, water, so nothing else. Can we say maybe the water issue is one of the issues which, when we say what does the president need to concentrate on in the future, this could be one of the issues? I think. We've been talking about water for the last 50 years. If you are not talking politics, if you're talking technical, real technical, yeah. this is a serious problem and it has to be resolved. And whoever wanna make achievement has to resolve this problem. Yeah. And there are a lot of ways to resolve it, not only the, the, the River Nile. Yeah. 
mm. okay, uh, uh, increasing productivity like our neighbors doing. I, I, I'm not going to go very far. If you go to Jordan and you find the productivity for Ferdans is much higher than us. The way we irrigate our lands, uh, one way or another, we have to train our farmers, we have to make sure we don't have a lot of waste for transportation or storage. If we work, we have to work in a lot of... And increase the sources. And increase, of course, the water sources. A country that is sources. right on the Red Sea if, and... If you, if, if you don't re resolve <laughs> the sources of the waters, whatever you do, you, yeah, you're going to, to double the productions, triple the productions, but mm. it's still limited. Mm. But you have a lot of lands. Mm. One way or another, you have to use this lands mm. because this is the future. Mm. So, you know, I, 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 I think... We, we uh, uh, you know, the government should really concentrate on research mm. on agriculture, on land, on irrigations, on water. Mm. And this is an area, it's worth any investment in it. Mm. Because uh, it will uh, absorb a lot of uh, the increased populations we have. Definitely. It will increase the productions and increase the GDP of Egypt and it will uh, decrease unemployment and uh, it will decrease our needs, our demands on uh, uh, importations for the food. Mm. I mean, if we really cut, if you look for the, uh, the list of importation of Egypt, you will be surprised, more than 65% food. Yes. So if one way or another we resolve this and we come to a conclusion, we do not import food, period. So we save from this list 60 to 65 percent. Mm. Automatically, this is will keep the pressure off on the hard currencies. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of consequences from increasing the production. Yes. If you increase the productions, if you do it the right way, with the right cost, automatically you cut the budget deficit, you cut the demands in the hard currency because you cut the demands on importations and mm. maybe you even increase your exportations, you have more hard currency. So the cycle is very positive all the way. Mm -hmm. um, the new capital, how do you see it? Personally, uh, I read a report last year after Sharm El Sheikh uh, conference and uh, the speaker was uh, one of the uh, Khaligi uh, gentlemen he was involved in that but he was talking about a different uh, city at that time he was talking about a new Dubai he was talking about a, a, a capital with all the intelligent the cleanness and high technology in buildings and roads and safety and everything. Mm. He was talking about attracting all international schools and universities here. He was talking about attracting a lot of hospitals here. So instead of all the, uh, our neighbors from the Arab countries go to Europe for uh, uh, health treatment, we can bring the good doctors from Europe and stay here as long as you give them the right environment. The same thing about education. We don't send our uh, kids anymore because this, the, the, the university and the high technology will come here. Mm. If you add that, that you really promote the Suez Canal uh, mega projects and uh, a lot of foreigners will come and invest there and will live there. So if they live in this capital, which is a few kilometers of this uh, working place in Suez area and uh, very few uh, uh, kilometers again from the beaches so you have a good environment so so if by by doing this this is right mm. if you add to that of course you really uh, uh, keep uh, the 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 from the uh, government uh, offices out of this, like, you know, the parliament, for example, uh, Ministry of Interior or whatever, or, uh, you know, uh, the, the, 
the crowds, that means the less traffic, uh, that means the capital here will be more relaxing uh, than there. And uh, they build it with a whole system there mm. uh, to make everything smooth. So, again, you know, we're talking about what the media telling us, what's the officials announcing. If that's what they're going to do, I think it's a good idea. Is it the priority at that time? I don't know. Maybe mm. we have more priority to invest the money in it. Mm. Okay, so that's a question, I think. So uh, it, it, we're talking about positive things in, in these two years. But one of the... How do you see the Suez Canal? For example, this has been met with mixed feelings because some people feel that, well, even though you increase the canal's capacity, unfortunately, with the slowdown in world economics or in global economics, it really is not paying off right now. And the issue is, what can we do with the logistics center? Do you think we're on the right track? Again, uh, when we talk about the project, uh, if they call it another canal or they call it uh, just a branch, uh, whatever it is, it's uh, technically it's a very good project. Uh, what you do here is, is, is expanding uh, your assets and make it uh, more uh, capable to absorb uh, more ships. But if for any reason the, uh, uh, at the size of the international trade has decreased, which, you know, it has nothing to do with us, simply because of uh, the cost of the oil. Yes. Uh, the decrease or the declining of the cost of the oil has made uh, the, the, the size of the international trades uh, much less. Mm. Uh, they had, it, it declined by 7% or 8%. Of course, it will affect automatically the Suez Canal. You know, uh, so we cannot really uh, punish ourselves because of that. It is true we should study, we should predict the international reports. And this is an area, I'm, I'm very sure it is a good project, mm. but should we invest in this time, in this project, instead of putting the money in something we need it more mm. sharply, that's the question. Mm. The devaluation of the Egyptian pound and the dollar dollar. It's a very serious problem. It was. And I don't blame the current government or the current uh, president of the uh, central uh, bank. By the way, in, 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 in my opinion, the, uh, the chief of the central bank uh, has nothing to do with the uh, devaluation of the currencies. Mm. Because his job is to control the banks, is to control the interest rates, to control the, to control the, the liquidity in the markets by selling uh, uh, bonds or or, uh, or uh, buying uh, bonds, uh, but when we talk about uh, devaluations, that's a completely different uh, issue. Uh, in our case, it's a supply and demand. Uh, when again we feel uh, that, that the uh, importations is over 65 billion dollar. Uh, where we get the 65 billion dollar, and that's that's official, by the way. Mm. Uh, there are additional, to more than that, uh, in official. Uh, uh, how we got this uh, money? We got it from the export, which has declined lately. We got it. We used to get it from the tourism, which mm. declined. We used to get it from the Suez Canal. Let's say it's the same. We used to get it from the uh, Egyptians uh, transferring uh, their uh, saving uh, their deposits uh, abroad. Uh, let's say that's still the same. There are about the gap between the export and uh, uh, the import is, is, is over 35 billion US dollar uh, between the export, sorry, and uh, yeah, 35 billion about 40 billion. Mm. If, if you really have 20 from the Egyptians uh, abroad and another five uh, from the tourists and five from the Suez Canal, that's, uh, that's 30. So you're still lacking of 
10. Again, I'm talking about officials, okay? Mm. There are another 20 billion US dollars we import in official. Yes. So how we get that? Unfortunately, we borrow at least 10 to 15. We used to depend on investment. Investments keep coming to, to, to cover that gap. Uh, in the last uh, three uh, years, there are no investment, or four years, there are no investment because, of course, uh, instability in the political situations here. Uh, uh, therefore, we, we, we have a problem. We have yes. always a demand. What is the government doing if they are serious of applying it, controlling the importations? Because we left importations without control for years. Mm. Egypt import everything. Anybody can import anything. Yes. It was no regulations. It was nobody in the, I, I don't think I know any country in the world that do that. There are a lot of way to control it, okay? Controlling quality, control for, from, through the tariffs. So, with legal way, without really hurting the, the, the other sides, because we have, of course, uh, agreements. But somehow we have to, to really decrease importations from the 65 officials at least by 5 to 7 percent every year mm. for the next five years. Mm. Increase the export in the same time, again, from 5 to 7 percent. That means closing the gap by 15 percent every year for the next five years. By doing this, we are taking off the pressures on the hard currencies. And that's a problem. If there are enough hard currencies available, you will not see, because this is not the real value How of the pounds. How can we solve this issue right now? Because I know that we have a lot of um, tough measures that have been taken by the uh, central bank to control this issue and control the foreign uh, reserves, uh, the foreign currency, especially getting out of the country. But is there really control in it? Taking into account that while you're trying to tighten the control, you have a problem with, you need businessmen that need raw material, that need equipment. Uh, you have uh, foreign investors in the country that want to take the money out of the country as well, to pay off certain loans or to take it back home. Are we on the right track with this? Can you control this? We have a serious problem. We have to face it. Mm. There are no other way. Okay, if anyone can tell you there are... Uh, uh, tomorrow, somebody will make a decision, and this is. Uh, uh, can you it. eliminate the black market this way? Because, quite frankly, this is the purpose. No. One of the purposes. As long as the demand is higher than the supply, we, with all the strengths of the government controlling these uh, black markets, they will not stop it. Mm. It's been there for years. It's never been stopped. They can decrease it. Of course, they shouldn't leave it mm. open like that. Mm. I think we should work in all directions. I, you know, I, I don't want to be pessimistic, but uh, there are a lot of countries being through this, and they've done it. They've done it. We can mm. go through it. Mm. Decrease importations with keeping in mind the factories, keeping in mind the foreign companies and all what the, 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 all the statements you just mentioned. Increase the exportations by increasing investment and helping the exporters going to a new markets. They don't know, yeah. okay? Uh, uh, that's number two. Controlling and monitor, controlling as much as they can the black markets. Be serious about it. Attracting the Egyptians to transfer more money than they are now. To invest back home. To invest, make them invest, investors instead of really, you know, mm. uh, uh, forget about this nice, uh, you know, words here and there, uh, emotional mm. uh, words. No, no, we mm. should really give them incentives to do that. Mm. We should go back, solve the problem about tourism. This is a, a key for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, the achievements or the events are not only economic but also political. Before we go into the political, we have with us on the line His Excellency, uh, former Minister of Foreign Affairs, Minister uh, Mohammed Arabi. Can you hear us? Of course. Uh, initially, I'd like to wish you a very uh, happy or holy Ramadan. Thank you very much, and the same to you and your audience. 
Um, sir, how would you describe the president's achievements thus far? He, uh, we're now marking the second anniversary of his being a president. Uh, from a political perspective, how do you think we have, how far have we come over the past two years? Well, I think uh, we uh, could consider, you know, that the uh, uh, foreign policy of Egypt is one of the uh, successful, I would say, pillars of the uh, uh, presidency of uh, President al al-Sisi. I think Egypt, for the last two years, were, uh, uh, has been able, you know, to cement its relationship with different countries on different uh, levels, different strategic, you know, uh, channels. So I guess uh, the uh, foreign policy was the main achievement of uh, that period. I think Egypt, you know, starts to regain its uh, influence, its role in the region and outside even the region. Uh, we improved our image everywhere. I think Egypt now is, uh, or let us say, should be characterized as the most stable country in the this stability actually will be reflected on the security and the stability for Europe and different other countries. So Egypt now starts to be the, you know, the major player in the region and one of stability in the whole world. And I think we already regained our uh, good image everywhere. I was uh, recently in uh, Germany, in Berlin, and you can see that everybody is receiving us saying, yes, we can congratulate you because you already accomplished the third uh, phase of the uh, roadmap. Yes. And now we have uh, politically no organs, uh, complete uh, political organs. So I think Egypt is on the right track. And uh, this also foreign policy is not just, you know, to improve the image of Egypt, but also it has been reflected on the uh, major issue, which is development inside Egypt. All the trips by the president and the foreign minister actually is, you know, paying more attention to the development of the uh, internal situation in Egypt. And you can see that uh, the foreign policy is serving now our ambitious plans to, to rebuild our country. Mm -hmm. uh United Nations, e Egypt being uh, elected as a non-permanent member in the Security Council and the fact that we're heading also chairing the uh, Committee Combating on front Confronting Terrorism. Yes, of course, yeah, this is also part of the achievement of the foreign policy. But, you know, the United Nations has, uh, I would say, a lot of, uh, or it needs a lot of reforms in order to be able you know, to tackle you know, the thorny issues which we are facing now in the whole world. Mm -hmm. I think the United Nations is not you know, the, in the right uh, uh, position now to tackle you know, these complicated issues which we are facing, like terrorism, like the lack of development, like many other things. Mm -hmm. So I think Egypt will be an instrumental in uh, that field. Egypt could play an important role. But of course, you know, the, the, the system of the Security Council will not give us you know, the, the uh, ability to, uh, let us say, to lead uh, some policies there because you have this uh, five countries veto and uh, we are just, you know, a non-member country for just two years. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say needs to be done in the coming two years? Well, I think uh, we, we already established now, you know, a very good uh, safety net of relationship, you know, with Africa, with the Arab world, with the Mediterranean uh, basin also. So I think what we need now is to lead a comprehensive strategy in order to you know, terrorism because with this new phenomena, it will need more efforts. Egypt was alone uh, for the last two years, you know, in that battle. And I think now we should uh, let us try, try to mobilize uh, more uh, countries in order to help Egypt in that fight. And I think if Egypt will, you know, be able to uh, eliminate, you know, this groups or these uh, radical uh, uh, groups, I think this will be a great success, not just for Egypt. Mm -hmm. Your Excellency, uh, Minister Mohamed Arabi, thank you very much for your fruitful input. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Dr. Hassan, how would you describe, because usually politics and economics are two faces to the same coin, has our president's foreign policy helped the country economically? Yes, I think uh, his uh, visits uh, has helped it a lot uh, for uh, really uh, making good connections between uh, 
different countries. Uh, you can see that uh, with uh, Germany, you can see it lately with uh, Hungary. Uh, we have a big conference with the Hungarian people. Mm. Uh, I met over 65 uh, businessmen, uh, they all coming here to invest. Uh, mm. And they are very serious uh, in different areas, okay. uh, in agriculture, in construction. This is the uh, delegation that accompanied their, with the prime, uh, with their, their prime, prime minister, minister. Uh, yes. Mr. Victor, yes. Uh, 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 I, I, I see the same thing a uh, few uh, years ago from Korea. Uh, from uh, so Germany. Wh whatever all the places he visited, mm. he uh, really uh, moved the water very nicely, mm. and uh, I can see the connections is very good. And uh, the private sector is taking advantage of uh, of this. Uh, mm. Mm. You know, I, I can see a lot of uh, private sector uh, businessmen uh, already in contacts with uh, the Germans, the Koreans, the Hungarians. Uh, the Romanian uh, things start to move again uh, and uh, of course when the president and the head of their can their countries uh, 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 making encouraging statements and uh, usually these countries give uh, backup to their uh, investors uh, most of the private sectors go you know that's all they need uh, uh, if Germany as a government does not give support to uh, the, the big company uh, who build uh, the, 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 the uh, electric uh, power and they give them a good credits, the deal will never go. The same thing about the French in the metro uh, and the same thing about this uh, railway uh, wagons with the Hungarian. So this is the way, you know. The president, with, uh, I, I think he has uh, an attractive personality with the foreign uh, leaders uh, because every time he go to a place, uh, things change. Mm. So uh, from this side, I'm very optimistic from mm. that part. Uh, of course, there are a lot of work has has, has to be done. Uh, uh, if you me the same questions, you know, what we should be doing in the next two years in economy instead of uh, political. Mm -hmm. I, I, yes, yes, I, I was going to, to get into that, but, to that. Okay. but maybe before I get into that, uh, I'd like to ask you, um, uh, when it comes to outreach, in the past we ignored the African file. How are we doing on that front? Because there is a lot of business opportunity in Africa, a lot of vested interest. Well. Two weeks ago, I was in Poland. Uh, and uh, I was in a conference called, uh, it's something like Dave was, but a little smaller, they tried to put it. Uh, of course, the majority there were uh, ex-Eastern Europe. Okay. And uh, they have one, com one, one committee completely on African-European relations. Okay. And I was attended there, as a matter of fact. What they saying, this is the future for Europe, not for Egypt. Mm. The Europeans saying the coming future is Africa. Africa is going to be the only country in the world with a lot of growth in GDP. And to make this growth happen, that means they have to import a lot of goods and there are a lot of investment that has to go there. I hope we do not leave that cake to the European and the American alone. We should go with the Chinese, of course, there. There are a lot of opportunities in Africa. We have neglected Africa for a lot of political reasons, uh, or maybe we were not trained enough ourselves. But for example, the Lebanese, they do much better than us in Africa, Cote d'Ivoire, for example. And somebody intelligent thought, okay, let's help, let, you know, let's put our uh, power together, ourselves and the Lebanese, and go to these countries who are, they are there, a lot of Lebanese business, and they are locally investing, mm. and they can help Egyptians exporters to go there. So there are a lot of ways to do it, mm. but at least I, I and see it, the, the, the new regime, our president now, one of the positive things, 
he, he moved very positively towards Africa. Mm. And this is the way it should go. Okay. Um, and maybe now to wrap up what needs to be done in the next two years. And I'm talking about two years, which is the continuation of his office. Yes. I think what he done is great and he should continue with the infrastructures. He should continue in the mega projects. Uh, I like to see the Suez Canal mega projects done because this is will bring Egypt to You talk e about the logistics center. Because the logistics is, center. Yes, okay. The logistics center of, of, of Suez Canal will bring to Egypt 100 billion US dollar every year, annually. Which we need. Th this is increase the GDP by 35%. Mm. You know, it, 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 just imagine the amount, okay? So this is a major project. I hope he, that they start working very seriously on the, call, the gold triangles, which is uh, Safaga, Minya, uh, because this is really between uh, metal projects, uh, ge geophysics projects, and uh, and housing and uh, agriculture, a lot of things together. And of course, this is going to be absorbed quite a few millions of, of people. And the funny, the, the, the good part of this, if this is work, because they're going to make a, a road, you know, a, a perpendicular to the Nile, all the way to the Red Sea, to this triangle, and if it is work, we'll continue doing it in another place. It will be replicated. And, 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 until the whole thing is really not any more desert. Okay? okay, this is this is the beauty of it. This is the advantage. I like to see the private sectors go as strong as they can in the again the big projects, the 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 the, the big companies uh, who can absorb and they have the flexibility to deal with all the uh, uh, bureaucracy here. Mm. They succeed so far. You're talking about the local companies. I'm talking about the local companies. The companies over $1 billion, uh, one billion Egyptian pounds revenue, okay? Yes. I call that a big, big company, companies, okay? Yes. We want to continue all that. And the government to support them because they're really making the GDP of Egypt. They, they are the major. Uh, uh, contributor of this. Yeah. I like to see the small projects moving from the paper, from idea to real life. Yeah. I like to see 25% of the GDP of Egypt from the small businessmen, from yeah. the small business companies, inter yeah. enterprises. Yeah. I like to see a thousand, a hundred of thousand young people owning running small companies and developing this company to be big like the one we're talking about. I study what China did, what India did, yes. what Malaysia, they all depend really very heavily on the small business enterprises. Which we are not really developing. Them. We're talking too much, but we don't feel it. We want to see it. Hmm. What about but the informal sector, which the, carried us? This is Over very the past few years. Uh, okay. Let me give you a funny things here. The only country has inflations and recession in the same time is Egypt. Mm. Okay. This is very weird in the economy, but we have that. Mm. In, in, again, inflations and recession in the same time. Mm. Why? Because we have an official economy and we have a non-official non economy. The non-official economy, unfortunately, enjoying enjoying mm. re th that's the one they have an inflation that's really enjoying uh, moving and uh, but uh, the official one that's the one they enjoying they, they having a, a recession mm. how we can really change this yes we're talking about a business do not pay taxes usually un under invoice or buy the goods through a third party and using the black market very heavily because... Some the, of those goods are subsidized as well. Uh, 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 that's correct. And they're using subsidized that, in that, energy. That's correct. Mm. You need, I think, a lot of experts because uh, and we were not the only country in the world. It done. I think a lot of countries mm. been through this. We have to make incentives. Maybe we can tell these people for the first five years, no taxes. 
to mm. encourage them. Okay? To come out in the light. And we have to give them a complete security, not to worry. Mm. You can get a lot of support from the banks, from here, from there. Uh, uh, for example, the export used to change their currencies uh, from the black markets. Yes. Because no, no regulation tells them to do otherwise. Mm. The incentives, the new regulations, incentives will pay the exporters only of he change his currencies through the official, the official uh, uh, channels. So this is a method I'm giving you from the right hand mm. incentives. In the other hand, I'm putting you on the right track. Yes. I think that's what we should do. Um, for investment, have we done our best to attract a foreign investor over the past couple of years? No. Again. Mm. A lot is it of only the government problem or is it also business to business that needs to be more developed or encouraged? Over 95% is government problem. Mm. Very simple. Mm. Sit with any foreign investors already there, already here. Tell him or her what's your problem and let's resolve it. Mm. If we satisfy these foreign investors are already here, they will expand hmm. their investment and they will attract a lot of their colleagues and friends to invest as well. So it's simple. Let's not talk about it. Let's, we keep talking about one window. Do we have a window, one window process here? We've been talking, talking about, about it for years. Law. Yeah, we, we do, we, we've been talking about it for years. I hope we stop talking. We're talking too much. Hmm. Acting very little. And a final statement, generally speaking, how much do you think has been achieved on a scale of 1 to 10? Considering all the accumulation of the problem, the, the environment, the, the problem, the, the, the fact the, that the, you're the, living in a boiling the, point the, region as well. The government inherited, I will give them from six and a half to seven. Mm. So far. Achievement, yeah, because it's, it's an impossible task. I mean, I, I, if I, uh, let, let's put it, if I look for any alternative, what they can do with this kind of problems, it's very difficult. The last thing I want to add, the tourism. Let's not forget the tourists. It's bringing a lot of revenue to Egypt. It's keeping a lot of people working, a lot of houses open. So let's work very hard on tourism. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Dr. Hassan Shafei, board member of the Egyptian Businessmen Association, I'd like to thank you very much. Uh, we, we did kind of a roundup, uh, a good roundup of what has been achieved and what thank maybe you. needs to be done. And maybe if I may be allowed to add, what needs to be done is that we have to work as well a lot. Because Absolutely. We have to work very hard no and can honestly. Do it. Yes, yeah. no government can do it uh, yeah. uh, on its own. And we need to seriously fight corruption. Uh, this is maybe another issue which we did not touch on, but this is uh, something that also needs to be worked on. I'd like to thank you very much for joining us. I'd like thank to thank you, you the viewers. Me. We'll see you same time next week. Until then, good night. Thank you.